Welcome, Eagles, to Trad Cat Night, your one-stop website for all of the day's latest church apostasy and end-time news. This is your number one ranked traditional Catholic outlet specializing in the real third secret of Fatima. Trad Cat Night is featured all over the alternative media circuit and has the most listened to and most influential podcast radio show available within the Catholic world. Trad Cat Night's guest list is second to none. Search Trad Cat Night across any major social media outlet for daily information and visit tradcatnight.org, the fastest growing end times community available in the market. So what's it going to be, Eagles? Fear or faith? Flight or fright? Join me as we head deep into the darkest night. Welcome, my good friends, to another edition of Trad Cat Night Breaking News right here on the Trad Cat Night YouTube channel. Folks, uh, absolutely outstanding last few weeks as it relates to uh, memberships with Trad Cat Night. Good to see all of the new names. Good to see all of those new uh, to tradition who are trying to figure out this mess uh, in the church. Uh, again, the church is going underground, folks. You're going to want to join the End Time Eagles as we progress further and further in this apostasy. So we asked the question today, Vatican II, what shall a Catholic do? And we will cite St. Vincent of Lorenz specifically here for this shorter podcast. But many people are asking the question now, my goodness, was Vatican II really Catholic? And as Father Hess has said repeatedly over and time and time again, he spent decades trying to give it a Catholic interpretation and he could not overall. There very much are heretical texts in Vatican II. It's not just uh, ambiguity as uh, some of the false trads will indicate. It truly is heretical. It's essentially the Synod of Pistoia all over again. A future Pope will strike down Vatican II, including the new Mass. But in any case, folks, at least more and more people are aware of this apostasy in the church, which truly is leading us up unto the biblical false prophet and the Antichrist, uh, who will soon arrive onto the scene, by the way. I wouldn't give it much more than three three to five year range at best um, in terms of their arrival onto the scene. It could very well be even sooner than that. Uh, but in any case, folks, Vatican II was pastoral. Uh, it was no way dogmatic. Uh, and to those who want to argue very insanely that we have to give assent of our minds and wills over uh, to this council by way of the uh, ordinary magisterium, what these people failed to understand is, although there were texts in Vatican II, which obviously did correspond to tradition, in those texts which served the New World Order agenda, if you will, the cult of man agenda, which perhaps were 5% of the text, 10% of the text, whatever real traditionalists, real Catholics want to argue over, it's really a moot point. But as a whole, this, this council, quote-unquote council, didn't correspond to the Catholic faith. So you cannot give your assent of mind and will over to something that pertains literally to another religion. The Novus Ordo religion is not our religion, folks. Do any of you find it so weird how uh, the mass of Paul VI first started out as the Novus Ordo Missae? They had to change it because people caught on like, hey, wait a second. Aren't we talking about the New World Order here? And then some people still egregiously today will try to defend John Paul II when he was at Gandhi's grave talking about uh, Gandhi, the great healer of humanity and of this uh, new world order. Benedict XVI even stood behind the new world order in several speeches. We are dealing with two different things, oil and water. As Father Voigt mentioned last night, and you've missed, if you missed this talk as a Catholic, you are going to want to listen to this talk. We got it to right to life issues. Talk, we talked about Vatican II, uh, false traditionalism. But he says you can't be by ritual. There is no embracing of the extraordinary and the ordinary. One belongs to the Catholic faith. One belongs to the Novus Ordo. It's oil and water. It's the modernist new mass, the new rites in, in the very, uh, at the, in the very best circumstances are doubtful at best. And before I failed to go uh, anymore, lest I forget some of the names here. 
As I mentioned, just had Father Void on the program last night with your subscription to tradcatnight.org. You can get access to that talk. I have Monsignor Perez, Father Kramer coming on the podcast uh, this week. I got Paul Craig Roberts coming on tomorrow, which will be a blockbuster talk. I also have a notable uh, Catholic prophecy uh, author, Xavier Arau. We're going to talk Marie, Julie, Jehenny, Three Days of Darkness, all of that good stuff. Uh, in about a week. I also have upcoming uh, in February Dr. Honowski, Chuck Farley from the Eponymous Flower, Michael Hitchborn. I've got Dr. Robert Sugenis coming back on, Hugh Owen from the Colby Center, Paul Stark from the Vatican Deception, uh, documentary E. Michael Jones, and the list goes on and on and on here at tradcatnight.org. But what does St. Vincent of Lorenz have to say on what must be believed by Catholics? He says this in his commentary, book one, chapter two, number six through eight, page 26 through 28. Also in the Catholic Church itself, we take great care that we hold that which has been believed everywhere, always and by all. This certainly doesn't correspond to Vatican II whatsoever. It's literally Masonic principles that they're implementing. For that is truly and properly Catholic, as the very force and meaning of the word shows, which comprehends everything almost universally and we shall observe this rule if we follow universality antiquity consent we shall follow universality if we confess the one faith to be true which the whole ch church throughout the world confesses antiquity if we in no wise depart from those interpretations which it is plain that our ancestors and fathers proclaim now the problem is the vatican II. Conciliars hide behind this whole hermeneutics of continuity and you truly have to be a brainless idiot to accept this answer because on the left side you could very easily put down onto paper these Vatican II Masonic principles the right side you can show what tradition says and if you want to arrive at the conclusion that they're both oil and one's not oil and one's not water then I don't know what to say I, I would say maybe get yourself a hazmat suit get out from under the chemtrails I would say perhaps uh, don't buy as as much GMO laced beefaroni, uh, if you will, because uh, you've lost it. He goes on to say, consent if in antiquity itself we eagerly follow definitions and beliefs of all, and certainly nearly all, priests and doctors alike. What then shall Catholic Christians do if any part of the church has cut itself off from communion with that universal faith? And again, tradition and the universal faith go hand in hand. What surely but prefer the soundness of the whole body to a pestilent and corrupt member, he says. What if some novel contagion seeks to infect the whole church and not merely a small portion of it? Did you hear what I just said, Vatican tours? Infect the whole church, perhaps, and not merely just a small portion of it. Then he will take care to cling to antiquity, which cannot now be led astray by any novel deceit. Have you all noticed in the Novus Ordo Media of late, they've been using this term novelty and trying to make it seem like it's an orthodox word. The novelty of love, the novelty of this, the no novelty implies heresy. Hello! Wake up, modernists. What if antiquity itself error be detected on the part of two or three men, or perhaps of a city or even of a province? Then he will look to it that he prefer the decrees of an ancient general council, if such there be, to the rashness and ignorance of a few. But what if some error spring up concerning which nothing of this kind can be found? Then he must take pains to find out and compare the opinions of the ancients, provided, of course, that such remain in communion with the faith and the one Catholic Church. Although they lived in different times and places... And improved teachers, whatever he shall find to have been held, written, and taught, not by one or two only, but equally and with one consent, openly, frequently, and persistently, that he must understand it is to be believed by himself and also without the slightest hesitation. The point in all of this, folks, is if a contagion, this Novus Ordo, which is seemingly swallowed up, I don't know, 90 to 95 percent of those who would identify themselves as Catholic. What shall real Catholics do? Well, you have to reject it. And as a part of that true resistance, by the way, and there's there's false traditionalists out there who argue, oh, well, you know what? You can't leave the church on the basis of corruption, which is true, by the way, but we're not in a crisis of corruption in the very least. That's a portion of it. We are in a crisis of faith. 
And where heresy is, you cannot be. Therefore, you cannot be in any Vatican II church lest you displease Jesus, lest you sin against God. You cannot be in, a, in any Lutheran church no more than you should be in a Vatican II Novus Ordo church. That is the reality of our situation. Now, if you were to come over to tradcatnight.org, you would find 25 to 50 posts daily, which exposes this apostasy in the church. I cover all the latest end time news. It's information that you're not going to find anywhere else on the web truly in one place. It's highly interactive. There's a message board. There's a chat room. There's a webcam uh, live stream that I do Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, which you can get free access to, by the way, if you sign up tonight at tradcatnight.org. There's live call and shows. My articles and analysis are only seen there. My writings and poems from the work Fortress of the Soul, a book I've been working on for the past almost decade, will only be seen there as well. Now, in addition to this, my Catholic friends, numerous resource pages are found there. There's links to live masses. There's a link to the Divine Office, which so you can stay in the heart of the church on a daily basis. There's a Holy Hour page. You can even write your own articles and commentaries for publication, which will be seen by all the members in the community. You don't even have to be Catholic to be stay, to stay connected to my information. We have a whole, all kinds of people from all types of persuasions, some of which are just here to listen to the podcast, whether they be my podcast or the special guest podcast. And so for $10 a month, folks, that works out to be 30 cents a day. It works out to be less than a half a cup of coffee on a daily basis, less than your own local newspaper, and you will stay abreast on all that is happening worldwide. I literally leave no stone unturned. I will so show you how all of this pieces together so that you are not deceived by the New World Order plan. And I've got a great guest lineup upcoming. I've already dropped some of the names. So don't forget to invite your friends to tradcatnight.org. The Eagles are gathering, and I'm currently in the works of starting up a monster conference, perhaps with the, the names that are assembled. I've got eight great traddy Catholics, if you will, that have in principle agreed to do a conference with me. Perhaps this summer, perhaps early 2020, we shall see. But this is the largest end times community, folks. And check the description box right now below this YouTube video. Hit that direct link where it shows you how to sign up. Uh, the memberful link there. Stripe is the payment processor. It's faster, easier, and safer than even PayPal. And again, folks, looking to see some new names. Even after the first few days, you will see how it's more than worth uh, the price per month. In any case, folks I, folks, I ask you all to continue to keep me in prayer as I will for you, but let us hold on to what St. Vincent Lorenz has said. We must resist Vatican II. Until next time, stay safe. God bless. Ave Maria.